Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Today we are continuing on with video number 11 of Nimrod's Secret Identity, The Greatest Conspiracy on Earth by Brother Lou White. Is Yahuwah bi-theistic, trinitarian, or one being? Dualism can be the belief in two opposing forces, such as good and evil. The yin-yang symbol of Gnosticism symbolizes this by teaching the physical reality is corrupt, while the non-physical reality is perfect. <clears throat> this sums up Gnosticism and is the infiltration of Eastern thought. In the case of the belief in two beings as co-creators, the label dualism or bi-theism seems to work for many believers. Very early, a man named Marcion, 85 to 160, taught that there were two deities and that the father was cruel while the son was kind and became dominant. This is called Marcionism. If a human being has two personalities, we call it schizophrenia. There is an, another possibility that is usually dismissed as heresy. If a person understands that Yahuwah became flesh and we call on him as Yahusha, meaning I am your deliverer, it is only Yahusha that can reveal this to them. Most people do not know this because it has been, not been revealed to them. All have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Matthew 11:27. Some have been led to think Yahuwah is three, yet one, through programming or indoctrinating. A straw man is constructed by saying we are created as three components, oh, mind, body, and spirit, or body, soul and spirit tradition is a very powerful stronghold yahusha acknowledged only two components a body and an nefesh. a nefesh he said we should not fear one the one that can destroy only the body and do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the being but rather fear him who is able to destroy both being and body in gehenna the word both is the key to this enigma. According to Yahusha, we are made up of a being, nefesh, and a physical body. At the Athanasius of Alexandria, consulted with Constantine at Nicaea to write the Nicene Creed, which I saw in my studies for Christian Worldview the other day. Um, they had the Nicene Creed all typed up in there, and I really am not liking this course. Um, <clears throat> okay, setting forth Trinitarianism, which the teacher told me that um, I have to go by the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Ruach HaKadosh. <sighs> um, but he's one. He's not three beings. As the defining element of Catholicism, Yahuwah tells us there is no deliverer but him, and Yahusha means, I am your deliverer. The prophet Yahshiyahu or Isaiah speaks in his name in chapters 43 and 45, revealing the truth that there is no one beside him. Note this statement carefully. Declare and bring near. Let them even take counsel together. Who, who has announced this from of old? Who has declared it from that time? Is it not I, Yahuwah? And there is no mighty one besides me, a righteous all and deliverer. There is none besides me. Isaiah, Yahshiyahu 45, 21. The sign of the everlasting covenant. Change. What day is the Shabbat? Speaking of the last days and the great distress at Matthew 24, 20, Yahushua told his pupils who would be alive during, during the day of Yahuwah and pray that your flight does not take place in winter or on the Shabbat. The weekly Shabbat is the one day, it is the only day blessed by Yahuwah, and he states it is a sign forever between him and his people forever. How can men transfer or alter this? 
They can't. The Catholic dogma is that the resurrection of Yahusha is the basis for the transference of the day. That doesn't make any sense. Of the rest, the day of rest to the first day. But that is a deception to remove the sign of the everlasting covenant and adopt the sign of Sunday, sun worship's special day. Oh, I knew how to do this before. Okay. First fruits. One of the seven high days has always been a shadow of redemption, and Yahushua fulfilled it by becoming the first fruit, fruits which the wave sheaf offering pointed to. In, in approximately 365 to 370 CE, the Council of Laodicea outlawed Shabbat and pronounced anathema status on any who obeyed the fourth commandment. Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Adonis day, and if they can, resting then as Christians. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, like the Yahudim or the Nazarene, let them be anathema from C-H-R-I-S-T, or Mashiach. I can make it! Please stop! Okay, so... Some have been led to think Yahuwah is three, yet, yet through programming and doctrinating. Um, hold on. I'm sorry, I read that part. Okay. In approximately 365 to 370 CE, the Council of Laodicea outlawed Shabbat. Surprise, surprise. Um, and pronounced an anathema, or worthy of death status, on anyone who obeyed the fourth commandment. Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Shabbat, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Adonis day, and if they can, resting then as Christians. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema from Mashiach. Yahusha's reference at Matthew 24.20 20 has been falsely interpreted by, by preterists, but, re, re, but read his word again, but read his word again from Matthew 24, 20 through 21. And pray that your flight does... Okay, sorry, I read that too. Okay. The Catholic doctrine followed by Protestants is in direct conflict on this point and endangers everyone misled by it. Constantine's Christianity would, in his words, have nothing in common with the hostile rabble of the Yahudim. They share nothing in common. The circus fathers made sure of this, and today Christians obey the circus councils rather than have anything in common with Yahushua's walk or any of his moral teachings or cultural patterns, except tithing. How easy it would have been if we had only been taught to obey the, the Torah. The reapers will remove all things offensive, then gather the wheat into the new Yerushalayim at Yahushua's coming. Even if we are united in error, we will perish. The living word is the word we are to live in, and any other word is off the path of life, and not walking as Yahushua walked. Most people still don't even know his name. No. On the day of Yahuwah, what shall you do in the day of visitation and the ruin which comes from a fog? Yahshiyahu 10.3 Stand now with your potent spells and your many witchcrafts in which you have labored. Yahshiyahu Isaiah 47.12 Reapers is a book that I read um, in the past, and I read it on, on here. And um, you can find it at torzone.net. Um, here's the illustrations. Okay. So... Yeah, I know. All right. Um, the day of visitation. Are you sealed for the day of redemption? Are you? The coming of the seraphim on the day of Yahuwah will be the scariest day in all of human history. Messengers will be unleashed and they will protect those who are sealed from being harmed. The burning ones, or seraphim, will first remove the weeds, then gather the elect for the wedding supper of the Lamb. The day of Yahuwah is explained by scripture so everyone can understand the importance of repenting before the trap 
closes on them. The pre-tribulation rapture teaching is widely believed by those on the broad road to destruction, but they are misled by its false promises. The name of Yahusha seals us for the day of redemption. Everyone needs to prepare now because the day comes quickly. Marriage. Is a marriage covenant between a man and woman pledging to serve one another until one of them dies? Absolutely yes. Who is the power who is the power of marriage vested in? The truth is so bizarre compared with what we are conditioned to think marriage is. It will seem completely inappropriate at first glance. Religious authorities and governments act in very similar ways. Yahuwah brings a man and woman together, and any other power that attempts to encroach on his authority is a prop or hoax. But people believe other authorities are real. The first man and woman had no ceremony. Yahuwah brought the Asha, or wife, to, to Adam, and they became one flesh. Yahuwah was very much involved, and Yahusha mentioned how he made them male and female. Matthew 19, 4-6, when Yitzhak and Rebekah became man and wife, Abraham wasn't present. How did they manage it? Uh, Rebecca's brother and mother accepted the proposal from Abraham's servant Alazar, and then Rebecca uh, accepted even before meeting Gitshak. One second. Flag day. Um, they are trying to give a day to worship and idolize the flag um, or do servitude to the flag. That's what the flag day is. Uh, the American flag. Um... Sorry, my husband was looking at the calendar and he was no, wondering. Well, every day it's showing up. Yeah, every day they have a different new tradition or holiday right, so that's paganistic. Yeah, another idolize, idolization no, day or servitude to the flag. Day no, it's ridiculous. Yeah, because we don't celebrate that stuff. There may or may not be a celebration party, such as the celebration we read about at the wedding at Cana, which today is called a reception. Some celebrations might last many Roscoe. days, but in the case of Yitzhak and Rebecca, look at how the two became man and wife. And Yitzhak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebecca and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus Yitzhak was comforted after his mother's death. Genesis Pharaoh Sheet 2467. This strikes at the heart of the artificial powers claimed by religious and state authorities and the shallowness of engagement or wedding rings, wedding gowns, ceremonies, long engagement periods, and all other human traditions that strangle young couples. Everyone is so confused, people don't even know that they're married when they live together as a married couple does. They are married, and a ceremony doesn't make them any more married than they already are. Yeah, we don't have to have a ceremony. We have been looking at things only from our fleshly viewpoint for, for far too long. Yahuwah brings us together and no one else. The covenant is a marriage. This part goes with this, so that's why I'm reading this too. Um, the Creator has sent amb ambassadors into the world to call out to His bride. The covenant, the Ten Commandments, is a marriage agreement between Yahuwah and all who, call, who are called to join to Him. Most people read their favorite translation of Yahuwah's word for years and never see the most glaring facts staring right at them. The truth is Yahuwah has never forsaken His covenant with Yasharal, Israel but has renewed it in the precious blood of Yahushua. Where are these? Are these okay? Those, they're empty. You don't need them? No. Oh, I didn't know if it was uh, It's deep. fine. I have them. Um, they're in my thing. Yes. Gentiles have been misled to, lead, to think that he has given up on the people he covenanted with, or that he made a new covenant with a different people. This is the core of what is called replacement theology. And it is a profound error. See Jeremiah 31, 37. 
The everlasting covenant is with all who will receive it, and we are engrafted into the commonwealth of Yasharal through this covenant. We are cut off from Yasharal the moment we depart from it. It is the renewal of this covenant that is significant because it, it, it is sealed, not with the imperfect blood of rams and goats, but with the in, in, infinitely superior blood of the son of Yahusha, Yahusha HaMashiach. Yahusha is the mediator of the renewed covenant. He writes it upon hearts of flesh and causes us to receive a love for the truth. He circumcises our hearts, enabling us to love his instructions. They show us how to love him and our fellow creatures. Gentiles become fellow citizens with Yasharal through, the, through this covenant and are referred to as being formerly Gentiles in the flesh. They are no longer Gentiles, but fellow citizens with Yash, within Yasharal through the workmanship of Yahusha. If we accept the Mashiach of Yasharal, but do not accept the covenant he brings with him, we are without hope because of our, our disobedience. See Ephesians 2, 10 through 22 and Hebrews 4, 6. Yasharal is now the living Hekal, or temple of Yahuwah, indwelled by Yahusha's spiritual presence in us. It has always been Yahuwah's will for Yasharal to teach his Torah to the nations. The account of, of Yuna portray, portrays Yasharal's unwillingness to perform this duty willingly, but now we, are, we in the last days realize our duty. We are commissioned to teach the Gentiles and engraft it, them into the Torah or covenant marriage, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We are one body, and we have been called to be his bride, Yasharal. See more on Passover, first fruits, and the resurrection as it relates to the sign of Yuna in the book Fossilized Customs by Brother Lou White, the same author of this book. I have um, Fossilized Customs, and I did a series on the entire book of Fossilized Customs. Um, I think that was last year. Um, next time we will be learning about homophobia is a misnomer. <laughs> Re wow. Receive Yahusha's Torah vision. He is our only teaching authority. What is the name above all names? This that all month is Gay Pride Month. No! Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> The Pharisees never Gay knew. Gay Pride Month. No fun. No, no fun. fun. <laughs> no fun. June. No fun. Yes. <laughs> July. Maybe fun. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. maybe. No. No. no it's Fourth no of fun. July. No, yep. fun. no fun. No fun. No fun. June. No fun. July. No fun. <laughs> no. No fun. No. Now it's time to praise you, Hua. Tola Rabba Abba Yahua Tola Hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, and my favorite, I want to change the rest of the song, but um, this is how I wrote it. Um, I'll, I'm just going to sing the beginning part. That's my favorite, my favorite part of it. Yahuwah is with me, Yahuwah is for me, Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If Elohim is for me, then who can be against me? Yahuwah's name will always be praised. Seek him and you will find him. Knock and the door will be open unto you, unto you. Bella, you like that? All I want to do is worship Yahuwah in spirit and in truth, in truth. 
for his kindness is everlasting. I love you all with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah loves us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.